Hi, I'm Josh, and welcome to 3ds Max UV Mapping Fundamentals. In this module, we're going to learn the basics of UV mapping. We'll start out by learning how to make UV selections, which are going to be really important to us to create clusters using different projection methods. Now, talking about projection methods, we're going to learn about those as well. And we're going to learn about different ones like planar map, cylindrical map, spherical, and even the box map projections. So as we progress throughout this course, we'll talk about these different projections and how they can be used in conjunction with a lot of the different tools to create a really nice set of UVs. All right, so let's go to the modifier list under the modify panel and let's add an unwrap UVW modifier. The first rollout that you see whenever you add the unwrap UVW modifier is the selection rollout. Now when you're making selections you can select vertices, edges, and polygons. The keyboard shortcuts for those are 1 for vertices, 2 for edges, and 3 for polygons. Now you also have the ability to select an entire element based on the sub-object mode that you currently have selected. So in this case we have polygons turned on and we can turn on the element toggle and whenever we select a single polygon it will select all of the polygons in that element. So with this let's go ahead and turn that off and let's talk about just creating some single selections. Now whenever we are creating UVs we want to segment a model based on a selection and then make projections based on that selection. So to show you what I mean let's simply left click on a polygon and that will create a single selection. Now to append multiple polygons to a selection you'll hold down control and start clicking. This is pretty common across all pieces of software and so this shouldn't be too difficult. Now to remove a selection we'll simply hold down alt and then so deselect whatever we want out of that. Now we can also convert selections. So what this means is if I were to go to vertex mode and select a single vertex on my UV, with that selected I can hold down control and then switch to any sub-object mode and it will select the sub-objects that were touching the previous selection that we had. So in this case we had a single vertex we held down control and switched to polygon mode and it selected all of the polygons that were attached to that single vertex. So this is a great way to create selections very very quickly. So now that we know how to uh, append and remove and then also convert selections let's talk about using the region selection. Now region selection is pretty common it's just by are done by holding down the left mouse button and then dragging and anything that is touching that region will be selected. Now the only downside to using this by default is it will ignore the back facing through this. Now this may be something that you would want but if you want it to select all the way through as I intended it to do you'll need to turn off ignore back facing. With that turned off let's do that same selection again and you'll see it now selects all the way through. So now let's talk about growing and shrinking our selections. With this current selection we can simply hit grow and it will expand the selection by one unit of the current sub-object mode. So in this case it's expanding out one polygon based on our selection. Okay? Now we can also shrink that selection and it will give us the inverse effect. Now anytime that you shrink to where you have no more selections you can no longer grow. Okay? Now after using the grow function we have these two functions that are grayed out and this is loop and ring. Now these can only be used under edge mode. So if I were to select a single edge and then hit loop it will select that entire loop of edges going all the way through the model. If we did the same thing and hit ring it would select the parallel edges. Now there are some very handy keyboard shortcuts or quick ways of creating loop selections and ring selections. To create a loop selection very quickly just simply double click on the edge in that loop and it will select it all the way around. Now if you were to select one and then hold down shift and then select the next edge in that ring it will go ahead and select the entire ring that way. So now that we have that let's move on to some of these select by options because these can really help us out on very complex models. 
The first one we've already seen, ignore back facing. Let's go ahead and leave that off. Let's move over to the point to point selection. This works with edge mode. So seeing how we have edge mode already turned on, let's deselect just by clicking out here um, in empty space and then turn on point to point edge selection. What this will do is allow you to select a single point and then move across to another point and make a selection. Instead of control clicking all of those edges all the way through, this is a great way to just get the uh, edge loop that you're wanting to a certain extent. So I'm going to go from this point to this point. It shows you a preview and then after you have completed that selection it will go ahead and create that. So let's go ahead and right click and then let's deselect just by uh, clicking outside of this. There we go. Now you'll have to turn off that point to point in order for that to disappear or deselect. So if you're having trouble with that, continue to right click until this turns off or just simply left click on this and turn it off that way. Now point to point does work beyond just going from one point in a loop to another. You can actually select a point up here and then you could come all the way down and it will make the shortest selection based on this. Now if this is something that you want you can kind of preview what that looks like or you can go to here and you can kind of modify how it gets to that point. So this can be very helpful and again this is really helpful for complex models. Let's go ahead and right click to end that and then turn it off. Let's move over to our next one and this is select by po uh, planar angle and this is done through the polygon mode. So hit 3 on the keyboard and what this does is whenever we activate it, any polygon that we select, it will go ahead and select any adjacent polygons to that based on the angle threshold. So if I were to select this polygon, you'll see that it doesn't actually select anything else. And that's because the adjacent angles of the polygons are greater than 15 degrees. So if I were to come in and type in 60 degrees, and then try that selection again, you'll see that we get a much larger selection. Now this can be really, really good for us on complex models. I like to use this on, on faces that are very planar and I have a lot of polygons that I need to um, select. Now to turn this off, we'll just simply deactivate that. Let's move over to our next one and this is by selecting by smoothing group. Now you need to make sure that you have smoothing groups set up on your model currently for this to work. The way that it works is you just specify what smoothing group you want to select and then just simply hit select by smoothing group and it will automatically select those polygons. Now on this model itself there is just a single smoothing group. Now we're not going to go over creating smoothing groups but this can be helpful. Now let's talk about the final piece that we have in this and this is selecting by symmetry. Now with this let's deselect all of our polygons and I'm going to turn on symmetry geometry selection. You'll notice this blue gizmo that shows up. This is the point of mirroring or symmetry and you can change the direction of this plane by switching the mirror axis. So in this case we could switch it to Y or we could switch it to Z. Now whenever you're using this, if you were to select a single polygon above that plane, it will select the one below it based on the axis that you have chosen. So let's go to X. Let's make that same selection. You'll see how that changes there. And I can hold down control and I can select all of these. Okay, and it gives me a perfectly symmetrical selection. Now one thing that you'll want to watch out for is that some of our models aren't exactly symmetrical. And if you were to go to the front view with this object, you can see that this blue line or the gizmo for this is perfectly in the center. Sometimes that might be offset a little bit. The way that you can make an adjustment to that is by adjusting the threshold. The higher the threshold, the more lenient this selection is going to get. So if I were to take this up, let's say to one, okay it would go ahead and create the selections that we already had because it is perfectly symmetrical but this does become a little bit more lenient and will try to make a good selection. Now this doesn't always work if you have a model that is perfectly asymmetrical. It will do its best but you might have some issues with it so this works best with symmetrical objects. 
So now that we have talked about selections, I want to talk about projections in our next video.